Hi guys today and welcome to the Billion Dollar Secret. In this series, Expert Wisdom, I will introduce to you today a communication strategist and pitching expert, Lori Richards. Lori co-authored a book, Ready, Set, Go with me and Brian Tracy. She has 25 years of experience in public speaking, communication and writing and has public relations and marketing background. Lori was the driving force behind the Pork Theater White Meat campaign and helped thousands of com companies improve their communication and create billions of dollars in new business. Welcome, Lori, to my channel. Hi, how are you today? Good to see you. Good Thanks. to see you, Lori. Today we want to create for our audience as much value as possible. So let's start uh, with uh, maybe immediately with the first question. Okay. Lori. You are a communication expert and you have been helping people for 20 years to communicate effectively and uh, in recent years online communication is a substantial part of our communication activities, right? Sure, sure. And there are a lot of people in our community, they watch the videos, they read comments on uh, uh, different uh, channels, uh, it's on uh, maybe Twitter, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Steemit, on YouTube. Uh, but most of them are afraid actually to communicate, afraid to write something, afraid to engage with others. Maybe they are afraid uh, that what they have to say is not interesting enough. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they are afraid of criticism. So I have two questions for you. Okay. What are maybe other reasons people are afraid of communicating with others that you would think of and what advice would you give them to overcome this? You know what, there's so many reasons, as you said, that people are afraid to communicate. Uh, the number one is that, that people are just afraid of being judged. A lot of people don't wanna be looked at. They don't want you to look at them because uh, what if you criticize my hair? Or what if you don't like my, my scarf? What if you don't like the way I said something? What if you don't like my body language? And they're very afraid of being judged. And you know, when you're in a population, you don't necessarily stand out. But as soon as you're in a meeting and you speak out, everybody is looking at you and people have a very real fear of that. Another fear that they have as part of that, Raphael, is they're afraid that they'll start to say something and then they won't get the right words out. They won't be able to find the right words. They won't be able to put it out there in such a way that other people get it. And so they're sitting in a meeting and they're trying to say something and the more they get nervous, I don't know if you know this, but the more a person gets nervous, the more they, their, um, their muscles contract and they, they hold a lot of stress and a lot of tension from the bottom of their chin all the way down to their stomach. And what happens now is all of that creates even more tension and it makes your face red and it makes your stomach churn and all this stuff is going on and now they're afraid that they're not going to be able to say what they need to say even if they do get it out there they're afraid that now people are going to criticize their ideas so it, it's really important to be able to get past that and one of the most important things that they can do is first of all you got to breathe you got to be able to take a breath and I know that sounds like everybody out there is telling us breathe 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 but there's a reason and that is because it's good for you and it works and what, what you want to do is you want to breathe you want to pretend you have a balloon in your fingers and you're going to blow up the balloon so you know instead of taking a this kind of a breath instead take a breath like you're gonna blow up a balloon so you go and now you've got all this breath all the way up here in your diaphragm and in your abdomen and it's all this breath is here and now that oxygen is going to go to your brain and, and settle you down a little bit and another thing that you can do uh, is think about the other person as opposed to yourself as opposed to worrying about, oh my gosh, what if they don't like my hair? Or what if they don't like what I've got on? Or what if they don't like, you know, something else about me? Think about the value that you have to share. And any idea is a good idea as long as it gets put into the mix. You know, we, we talk about brainstorming how no idea is a bad idea. And I think it's fair to say that as long as you're adding to the mix, there's, there's value in your perspective. That's why you're on the team. It's not enough to be good at what you do. You have to be able to tell people about it. 
And if you can't tell people about it, then you are an engineer or an architect or a construction supervisor or a farmer or a research scientist or a computer programmer sitting in the corner. That's not going to get your job done. You really have to be able to speak out. But that's a very real, that's a very real fear. Okay, uh, we are talking here about, you know, uh, communication on forums in um, communities, in online communities, where you actually have time, you know, to think over that and it's in writing. So uh, it's much easier. Nevertheless, people somehow hold back, right? Is there anything that would have them uh, in, uh, in that area? What would be your, your advice? You know what, the biggest thing that I would encourage people if we were interacting, you know, online and for instance, your viewers out there, the minute you think something, write it. Now, don't hit your send key just yet. <laughs> Because if you're, if you're saying something, ask whatever it is that you're writing about, ask yourself, does this, add, does this add value? Does this add to the conversation? Does this help what's going on? So, you know, a thumbs up is great because it tells Raphael or it tells me you're on the right track or I agree with you. And so a good thumbs up, that's right. A question usually is good. Lori, what did you mean about this? Raphael, what can you tell us about this? Raphael, can you tell us a little bit more about this? Those are great additions. Um, a great addition would be, uh, I tried this, it didn't work, do you have other ideas? Or I tried this and this is one of my obstacles, what's another idea? There's a huge difference between questioning on the internet, questioning in dialogue, in social media, and attacking dialogue on social media. Attacking, in my opinion, is not okay, simply because a huge part of communication is remembering that it's not about what we put out, it's about the interaction. I'm a believer that real communication is not talking and it's not writing. Real communication is writing what the other person needs to hear in order to understand your message. And when we take really divisive and really polar um, ideas and we start fighting and we argue about it, what, what's happening is that no one is listening. The person that you've written to isn't listening and we're not listening. It, so instead of that, asking a question is a good way to do. And when you ask the question, one quick tip, and that is ask with curiosity, not judgment. There's a huge difference between saying, where'd you get that information? And where did you get that information? One is with judgment. The other is with curiosity. So when you're interacting online, make sure that you're adding to the conversation, either in saying, great job, you're on the right track, if, you know, just as encouragement, or to actually add an idea. I tried this once, here's what I found. I haven't tried this, what else can you say? What if I hit this obstacle, what can I do? One of the things that, Raphael, that I love about social media is the opportunity to exchange valuable information. That's what this is really about, in my opinion, is how can I get more information and how can I share more information? But we, we have to remember, whether we're on the video like this now or whether we're writing in the comments, that the, that the um, idea is to write what the other person will understand, not just vent. Does that help? Absolutely, absolutely. So guys, this is the best opportunity now to try out what you have learned uh, in, uh, in the first question and uh, write it in your, in your comment. Don't be a lurker in the dark. Come out and write something and share your ideas, share your perspective. Yes. Let's do it now. Now is the best opportunity. And uh, give us a thumb up if you learned something. And tell us what questions you have. Ask questions. Tell us what's working. Tell us what you've tried and what you want to try. <laughs> Another thing that I have um, noticed is that uh, many people comment, but they somehow have trouble to draw attention of other people or engage into communication with each other in forums and also in comments, uh, for example, under my videos. So what advice would you give them? How can they make people listen to them, communicate with them in public forums, in communities, in comments? What techniques maybe can they use to, you know, to make the message more attractive, draw more, more attention and uh, inspire maybe communication? The, the most important thing is to make sure that you're using that other person's language, if you will, and to not be accusatory. Again, um, as soon as we find that we are simply venting 
as opposed to actually trying to communicate. One of the tips that, I, um, that, that you're, might be helpful for the viewers is to think of yourself as having a, an honest conversation with someone. Would you say that in person? Would you say that as opposed to what you're writing here? And if you said it before you hit that send key, because that, that's, that's a real trigger for us is we get to typing along and then send instead of stopping to look at what we read, consider how someone else might hear it, and then maybe tweak it a little bit before we hit the send key. And that's a really critical piece is when people read, I don't know if you know this, but we read Typically, we read at the same speed that we speak. The average, the average American, I'm American, and the average American speaks 240 words a minute, and the average American reads 240 words a minute. And we're basically reading to ourselves. We're hearing the words in our head. So what happens is that when, when we read something, the reader puts the tone. So again, to go back to that quote of, you know, where'd you get that information? The reader is the one who decides in person, you know, you can hear the tone, but in reading, it's the reader who decides, is it going to be, where'd you get that information or where did you get that information? So it's really important when we write something in the comments to also take a look and ask ourselves, you know what, if that guy's angry, and I can tell from his or her writing, if that person's angry, how are they going to take it when I write this? And you can write the most benign stuff. I wrote to someone one day, just in, as an example, I had a friend who took a new job. And I wasn't sure it was the right job for this person, but okay, if you think this is the right job, good for you, and I'm gonna support because this is a friend of mine, it means a lot to me. And I wrote, I just hope you're happy. And what I meant was, I just hope you're happy. But what he read obviously was, I just hope you're happy. Because he got really snarky with me in the comments. And it occurred to me, you know what? It never, when I wrote it, it never occurred to me that he would take that as a snarky comment for me because I really did mean, I just hope that you're happy that this is a good job for you and that it offers wonderful opportunities. So you really have to be careful. And if someone does take it wrong, go ahead and go back and say, gosh, I really didn't mean it that way. You know, I really meant to be supportive. I really am, you know, simply curious or whatever it is, but recognize that, that, Sometimes your words don't come off the way you want them to, and in, in writing, it's especially true. Right, right, because, uh, yeah, in the, you know, 70% of the communication is actually our tone, our body language, and that's oh. what is missing um, in forums, in writing, right? Yep, and because that reader puts their own tone to it, it's a little less predictable, so you want to be extra careful when you put those comments. But, you know, like you said, one of the most valuable parts for you and, and for me in doing something like this is hearing what they have to say, is listening and reading their comments. So um, I don't know about you, but I love when the comments start coming in. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, people share their uh, life uh, stories and uh, the experiences. And this is what, what it is about, about sharing, exchanging uh, information, exchanging also experiences and uh, ideas, first of all, ideas, right? Yep. And, and learning okay. from those and then you and I, you know, using them and everybody else. I mean, sharing an idea doesn't mean that you have two ideas or that I have less ideas, it means the world has right. many, many more ideas. And I think there's real value in that. Yeah, somebody told me something like, uh, you know, when you share um, one idea 10 times, um, guess what, you, you know, the people you share it with, they have heard uh, that idea once, but, but you have heard that idea 10 times. So your, yeah. also your subconscious uh, starts working on that idea and de developing other ideas around that and connecting to that idea. And uh, so you actually uh, have a lot of um, ad advantage or let, let's say um, a payoff from telling these ideas, uh, oh, for, yeah. from sharing these ideas, not only uh, by engaging with others, but also you know, by putting your brain to work on these ideas, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that you've had the experience where you, you hear somebody share an idea where you've heard it before and then all of a sudden you think, 
you know, I know I heard that before, but it occurs to me that based on where I am in life right now, this might be another good idea. So yeah, um, there used to be a commercial uh, in the States that said, try them again for the first time. And it was about a cereal. And the concept was you've forgotten just how great this was. So, absolutely, you know, absolutely. I notice it, you know, when uh, I write my book and uh, I notice that um, different parts inspire different people because people are in different uh, um, situations in their the lives and, you know, uh, yeah. different ideas resonate uh, with them. In different uh, in different life periods or in different life situations maybe you know uh, perspectives life perspectives oh, yeah. or ex experiences they had in their lives right you know what that's one of the things that I really appreciate uh, about what you and I did with the ready set go book there are 20 authors in there that wrote at different parts in their life but as I read the book you know after we all put it together we, we put our stuff together as I read it the first time I first was you know triggered by oh this is interesting or oh this is an interesting person this is an interesting writer this person has an interesting story and I picked out two or three that I thought you know what this is really good stuff and I started sharing that and then the second time I read it I went through and I found completely different experiences because I was in a different place in my business and I was in a different place in my life and in my personal relationships. So every, you know, with that many perspectives, I love that I know that I can go back and pick up that book and I can find three or four, I mean, gold nuggets, big gold nuggets that are helpful for me personally and professionally, because there's so many good perspectives that, that will fit at different times in our lives. It's one of the things I really like about the, the, the idea of collaboration. Absolutely. And I found, as you know, some gold nuggets in your chapter. Thank and you. so, so let's come back to, to, uh, to your expertise. You have okay. been helping thousands of businesses uh, to polish up uh, the pitch, um, be, it in, uh, be it for raising money, be it for selling. You yeah. help them to, general, uh, to generate literally billions of dollars in new business. That's and, right. Uh, now, as influencer and angel investor, I get each and every day offers from people who approach me, either through YouTube channel, through my blog, maybe through my startup platform. They yeah. want to do business with me, win me as a business partner. Uh, maybe they want to win me as an investor as a mentor, as a speaker, or just, you know, or maybe they just want to get my support. And I noticed most of the offers or the pitches, so to say, the messages, they are just poorly presented and they don't convince me. But they are, there is always some merit behind, you know, every idea or every offer. So sure. what would be your advice for them to do what what are let's say the most three important things you need to consider to make somebody interested in what you have to offer what would it be the the first thing is to know who they're talking to okay. because um while i believe that you should be able to describe what you do in an elevator with the with the you know proverbial elevator speech elevator pitch that everybody's out there talking about have an elevator speech have an elevator pitch the reality is that in my opinion every pitch should look different much like if you were selling a house if you were selling a house and let's say that let's say that you love to do outside um uh landscaping you love it is your piece to go out and mow the lawn that is what you love to do and you love to work with the trees out there and you love to plant flowers in the spring and you love your outdoor por porch to look just gorgeous and oh my gosh that is why you come home on weekends is just to do that my guess is that when you have somebody in to look at your house, the first thing you do is you show them this beautiful yard because isn't this yard beautiful and it's so much fun and oh, you should see it in the spring and oh, in the fall. And, and you probably spend time on that, on that outdoor part because that's what you love. I hate mowing the lawn. <laughs> I don't like planting flowers. I love having flowers around. I want nothing to do with keeping the yard. And so if when I come to your house and you're trying to sell it to me, you try to sell, look at this beautiful yard. All I can think is, oh my God, I am going to have to mow this lawn or I'm going to have to hire someone to do it. What a pain. I'm not, I'm, I don't even want to go in because of this yard. 
where you might have the perfect home for me because you focused on the yard, I won't even look at it. Now, I like to cook. And I like my kitchen to be great. You might hate to cook. You might think eating out is the, you may have never turned that oven on, but I like to cook. So when we go in the kitchen, you might just say, okay, and here's the kitchen. Now let's go look over here. And I think now wait just a minute. I love the kitchen. So even though you don't love the kitchen, you ought to be selling me the kitchen. Or you ought to be selling me because I'm a speaker and I spend most of my day on my feet. You ought to be selling me that jacuzzi upstairs where I can soak my feet. Or you ought to be selling me the wine cellar where I can relax when I get off the road. So you want to know who you're talking to. And it doesn't mean that I have to know you personally, Raphael. It means that I need to understand a little bit about what do you think a guy who has spent his time interviewing billionaires and trying to gain secrets from those billionaires and has written more than one book and has a YouTube channel and has social media all over the place, what do I think he might be inter interested in? And then asking myself, okay, how can I help him get what he needs? Because in helping you get what you need, the reality is I'm going to get what I need. And so I think one of the biggest mistakes that we make with pitches is we talk about us instead of knowing who we're talking to. I don't believe that an elevator pitch should be given to the mass audience. I think we should know a little bit about that person, whether it's, I know they belong to this association because they're obviously at the meeting, they're wearing a name tag or a lanyard, they're dressed like a, a professional businessman as opposed to dressed you know, like a, a construction worker who, that's not to say a construction worker is not a professional businessman, but they're a very different businessman than a guy who works in a bank, for instance. Um, so. You want to know a little bit about that, who that person is. So this is the, the first point. So to say personalize your image, know who you're talking to and, uh, you know, and construct your or set up your message uh, that it fits the person who receives it, right? Yes. And if that's a person who um, is looking to make money, then you've got to talk about how you help them make money. Um, we talk about, and this is number two, and that is make sure you hit on the audience's heaven and hell. And that is, you know, what's their, what's their best thing? What do they love? And if, again, if the answer is they want to make money, make sure you're saying so that you can make money and show them, build that connection. It's interesting, you know, Raphael, that we think that people are smart and they can make these connections. People are smart but they don't make the connection always. I'll give you this example. I know a guy who sells life insurance. And when we first started working together, he talked about how, you know, you got to have life insurance. Life insurance is really important. And here's how life insurance works. And I thought, well, that's really fine and dandy, but, and we all know how life insurance works, but you're not touching on, you're not connecting with the audience. The difference is you need to have life insurance and um, are you prepared if some sort of a tragedy happens? Are you prepared to take care of your family? That's what life insurance is about. And when you touch on their family and when you touch on tragedy, all of a sudden part of the brain and frankly, part of the heart and part of the stomach goes to, oh my gosh, it connects with that emotion. So you want to make sure that you're hitting on that heaven or hell. In this case, the hell is a tragedy happens to your family. I'm going to help prevent something from happening prevent your hell and then i'm going to help you get your heaven i'm going to help you make more money by closing more new business pitches oh my sorry about that my camera's moving um i'm, I'm going to help you make more money by closing more business pitches uh i i did a pitch not long ago and and the basic um the basic thing was are you are you winning more pitches or losing more and that's all i have to say because i know people spend tons of hours and money putting together new business pitches and then they go out and they give 10 of them and they win one okay. well that's so if uh especially you know if somebody pitches like uh, establishes this first contact through email and mm -hmm. uh they people just need to realize you know all uh, all of us they have busy lives right we have busy lives that we have maybe 
uh, half a minute at maximum to get the first impression of the of uh, what the email is about at, at maximum half a minute so yeah. they have to somehow make it interesting in this half uh, half a minute and they can make it only interesting if there is something in there for the recipient right and and not in there in the depths of the email for goodness sakes right and and, and also you know communicate as, as you said it's uh, not every um, let's say advantage is obvious from the context especially when we don't have time to to read uh, you know to, to read the entire email or to read and think uh, for hours about or for minutes about uh, the content. Well, what that right? person saying? You know, there's. So, I heard someone say recently that when it comes to your emails, you're either adding value or you're wasting my time. And if your email is not packed with value, not to you but to me, then I don't care if I, I think about how many newsletters or freebies you've signed up for and you're just going through and click, 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 delete. Not even opening them. And these are ones we asked for. So, the, you know, we thought when we started that, boy, this is gonna be valuable to me. And it didn't take long and we figured out this is nothing but a promotion, click, I'm not even interested, unsubscribe. And we may not even take the time to unsubscribe, we just go through every morning, click these off and delete them. Because you're in email, as in person, you are either adding value to someone else or you're wasting my time. And if you're wasting my time, you've created, quite frankly, you've created a persona and a personality as someone who wastes my time. And, and we don't give a lot of third and fourth chances. So in the first email, if you wasted my time, the second email you wasted my time, I'm done. I, I, you can keep sending those emails all you want to. Oh, golly, all the emails that we get. And it, we just delete them because you're not adding value to me. And so the, the second one really is to make sure that you're making that connection. And the third one relates to it. As, and, and what that is, is stop talking about you. Stop talking about you and start talking about your audience. You know, again, Raphael, if you and I have a conversation and all I talk about is me, that's not a conversation. That's me pushing you. And I just keep pushing you and pushing you. Well, nobody wants to be pushed and we're much more sophisticated consumers today. We're smart enough to know when an email is a sales pitch. But when you take your content and you make it of value to them, not look what I have, but instead look how this will help you get your heaven or prevent your hell. Now you've got a different conversation going. Now you've got people saying, well, I really do have that hell and I really don't want that. And I really do want that heaven. And maybe this is a way for me to get that. But stop. here's a challenge for your, your listeners. Go through your emails and circle all the times you use the words I, we, our, us, or the name of your company, your product, or your division. So look at all the content in there that is really about you. This is, this is a good idea, actually. Let's do the following for the listeners, for the audience here. Uh, okay. Guys, go through your last pitch you did through email. Last you con uh, contacted somebody and tried uh, to convince somebody of doing something or getting involved uh, with your business or whatever. And uh, really count these words. I, we, and our, and my, and so on. And, and ask anything, anything first person, anything that's about you, anything about me. And put it into the comments. How many of them did you find? Okay. And we'll do the, a very interesting contest. Uh, the guy who has them the most or those among the most, we will, uh, we'll make an award or let's do. No, not the most, Raphael. Most is bad. You are I know it's bad, but nevertheless, I mean, we'll just don't, don't be shy guys, right? <laughs> And uh, we'll, uh, not an award, it will be a, a contest, of, you know, the, the winner, the... The Raspberry say, Award, as uh, they say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the worst teacher in our community will get an award from it, okay? And, and, and everything counts, because you'll find that most of these pitches start with, I want to take just a moment to end. I want to show you. I want to thank you. I want to ask you. Well, that's not about me at all. That's all about the writer. 
That's what you want to do. It's like a speaker who stands up and says, I want to talk to you about. Well, that's not about the audience. That's only about the speaker. So, so how, would you, how would you say instead of, uh, I want to um, show you something, well, how, would, how would you well, say first, it in different words? First, I'd start by making sure I knew what their heaven and hell was. So instead right, absolutely. So I, let's assume yeah. we know already what they want, right? What the recipient wants. How do, do you say instead of, I want well, to show you the, something? For would the you reason, say, like, what about, uh, would you look at that or would you, how, how would you say that? You can ask them a nice question. Again, you know, for the, for the one that I put out recently, um, as an example, so, it, and that, by the way, it's not wrong to say I, it's just wrong to talk just about you. I'm just, you know, looking for the, for the technicalities, how to, how to do that. The, the one that I put out recently, the, the opening line was, are you losing more business pitches than you're winning? Okay. That has nothing to do with Lori. That has only to do with you. Are you wasting more time on social media than you're getting value for it? If you are, here are three ways that you can do the blah blah blah, whatever that is. Here are three ways, or here's a program that not, I have a program for you. Because that sounds, it sounds schmarmy, it sounds sleazy, it sounds, do I have something for you? But wait, there's more. You know, we know we're being sold to. So instead, are you wasting more time on social media than you're getting value for it? Are you wasting more time on one media platform than you'd like to be getting? If so, here are three things you should be doing. One, get a resource that tells you how you can better use that particular social media. For a resource, here are three that you might find useful. Not, here are three I have available for you to buy. So, do you hear the difference there? Absolutely, absolutely. That's the distinction. So, um, instead, of, instead of telling all about, look, I've got this, instead, are, are you a person who has had this problem? So are you a person who's having this hell? Or are you a person who's looking for this heaven? If so, not I want you to look at, or I have three things for you, but here are three things you might be interested in. And if you're interested in a resource, here are three resources. This one is for the person who wants this. Not I like this one because blah, 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 blah. No, it's not about what I like. It's about what they like. It's about what they need. And so, you know, a doctor, and, and I really believe in sales, you, you want to look at yourself as a doctor. You want to diagnose what is the problem or the area that you can help, either preventing or helping, you know, preventing hell or getting heaven. What is that area? And then showing them how, okay, of all the things that are out there, here's the one that would work best for you. If you went to a doctor and, and that doctor consistently gave you the very same medicine that they gave everybody else in the waiting room, you wouldn't feel like you were being taken care of. But as soon as the doctor starts um, paying attention or whether they're asking questions or whether they, you can tell this person knows me, this person knows that I'm afraid of this, or this person knows that I really want this. And they look at me and they say, based on a person who really wants this or who wants to avoid this, this one here is a better option than this. This one is for people who want to do this. If that's you, here you go. As opposed to, I want you to go home and take this. And you know what is interesting, Raphael? When you listen to people talk to one another, if you listen to a person selling, they use I language, not professional salespeople, not advertisers. That's where my marketing is. When you go into advertising, Nike never, never says, I want you to do it. That's not what they say. They put it in your, in your language. They put it in your lap. But people who aren't good at it, they talk about you. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I need you to do this. You know, can I just say, when it comes to goal setting, nobody wants to help you get your goals except your mother. So when you tell us that, you know, my goal, our goal is to hit this number by midnight tonight, I just don't much care what your, I know that sounds terrible, but I don't much care what your goal is. This is something that we, uh, I wanted to transfer us our con uh, conversation to, uh, to this communication within the company. Mm -hmm. This is a channel for uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, most of our, many of our viewers are entrepreneurs. Uh, we talk a lot hear about entrepreneurship of course also on the you know very highest level how uh, billionaires uh, do it and you know i have interviewed some 
of the most yeah. successful entrepreneurs in the world. And I, what I realized is that the communication is in, in business between the teams or within the team and to our customers, um, to maybe our business partners, to the suppliers. This is extremely important and it is probably the most uh, undervalued skill in, uh, in many businesses. And I have, as, as I told you before when we were, when we were talking, uh, I have researched this um, billion dollar secret, set up the principles and some of these principles, they, they are uh, the soft principles. And this is what I have implemented in my company already. Uh, because I was traveling so much and I didn't do any process changes or business model changes, just the soft principles, just the soft skills and uh, soft factors. And one of these factors is communication. And what I noticed is that only by doing that, the revenue of my company doubled and the, uh, um, and the profit of my company tripled. So yeah. from your perspective, from your experience, I mean, you have... 25 years of experience uh, in uh, communication and you uh, you have so many uh, businesses with the communication uh, what are let's say the three most important pieces of advice you would give to my audience to improve their communication with the customers with the suppliers or within the company what was what it would be you started to talk about that already actually yeah, well, right. you know Part of it is that whole I and, and we, you know, right. um, if you, if the accounting department sends you an email that says, um, we're trying to reach our goal by November 27th, a lot of people say, well, that's your problem. I'm trying to reach my goal too. But if you take that and put it into someone else's perspective, and what that means is, um, if you'd like to make a difference, here's how you can do it. People like to make a difference. Um, we're, there was a day, you know, and this is just a major change and a major shift in business communication overall. And that is there was a day when, uh, when as managers, we were encouraged to, to tell people, I need your help. But the reality is that today we all need help. So as soon as somebody comes and says, I need your help, we kind of go, well, that's too bad. I'm busy. So instead of what you need, tell us what we get. So instead of what you need, tell them what they get. So instead of you need to start turning in your paperwork early, make your email or your, or your presentation, either one, say um, for any, uh, if you'd like to have your expenses reimbursed in your 15th of the month check, you'll need to turn in your paperwork by the 10th. So now it's all about them, it's not about me. Um, and again, very few people care about what your goal is. They care about what their goal is. So as a computer guy, here's a good example for you. When you go to a meeting, think about it like this. If you go to a meeting and the people that are going to be in charge of this meeting and present are the computer folks. If you're a computer guy, that's one thing. But most of the people in that room are not computer guys. Most of the people in that room, if the computer department's giving a presentation, most of the people in that room are not computer people. So the computer people come in and they say, just want to tell you a little bit. I just want to tell you a little bit about what we have going on in our department, right? And then they proceed to talk about stuff that is way up here when it comes to computers. My guess is you don't care about that. What you do care about is, is my computer reliable? Is it going to work when I want it to work? And is it as fast as I want it to be? That's all you care about. Right. So when the computer guys come in to talk, what they need to say is, we've been looking at a new computer system so that you know you have a reliable computer, so that your computers will be faster, so that when you need your computer to work, it will work, because that's all anybody in the room cares about. As opposed right. to... I'm not, not talking about, uh, let's say, the technical details instead talking about the benefits from uh, for the recipient this is actually uh, you know um, I will not I will not be talking about uh, the uh, company name but a company sent me just recently like two or three days ago a paper um, I am like a consultant for this company in the area of cryptocurrencies and uh, they are introducing a new functionality and okay. they made a, a like a presentation paper for actually the users of that cryptocurrency uh, for the customers 
uh, to use that uh, functionality. And this functionality is very uh, advantageous for the user, very profitable and so on. The users can actually earn money with that uh, by promoting the, uh, the system, whatever. Uh, but the way they have described it, it is like on a very technical level, how it works instead of what is in there for the user. So I actually, uh, the advice you gave me now, or you gave our uh, viewers, is more or less the advice I gave uh, to them. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, the uh, average user, they don't care about how it is solved, if it is sold, solved through a smart contract yeah. or through some, uh, you know, technical details uh, that they don't understand anyway. Uh, yeah. They are just, uh, you know, interested uh, in the payoff for them or how what's the effect for them or what's the result for them and the easier the better right yes and and what you'll find is i work a lot with technical professionals that that's probably one of my biggest audiences is helping technical professionals take their technical information and turn it into something that is of great value to the non-technical audience. It's a, uh, it's translation. It's translating out of tech into non-tech to the actual user. And one of the things that we know for that audience in particular that's very helpful is analogies and metaphors and examples. So the better, you know, if if the when the user who's when the user who's not technical, all they want to understand is this is as if you were doing this. This is the way, um, this is the way um, a bread maker works. This is the way, um, this is, it would be just like if you opened your browser on a computer. It would be just like if you went to the bank. It would be just like when, when you can find those um, metaphors and those examples and those, those analogies, that's what your listener will really glamp onto. Not just listener, but reader anyone that you're you're trying to communicate with so um, especially what in uh, sorry for interrupting you especially mm -hmm. in new technologies where people actually yeah. you know in a, in a real new uh, technology where people don't have like hands-on experience with that technology but they can relate maybe to a to an experience that they had before right yeah. and uh, right. and then uh, make them understand it in that in that way as you said through an yeah. analogy you want to remember that, that communication is not us talking and it's not writing. Communicating is how do I say what I need to say? How do I say it in such a way that they'll understand it? Uh, I use this example. In the States, uh, I grew up in the Midwest, but I live in the Washington, D.C. area. And in the Midwest, we drink pop. But out here on the East Coast, they drink soda. They call the same thing soda. And in Texas, they'll call it Coke, even if it's not. Uh, waitress will come and say, what do you have? They say, I'll have a Coke. And the waitress will say, what kind? And you say, you know, 7-Up, Dr. Pepper, whatever. So it, it's a completely different language, if you will. Well, if I go to the Midwest and ask for a soda, I'm not going to get what I want. I'm going to get a soda water with a lemon, because that's what they serve as soda in the Midwest. But if I come out here into Virginia, into the Washington, D.C. area, and I ask for pop, they don't know what I'm talking about. So it, it's not about what do I want. It's about how do I say, how do I deliver this message? How do I write it in such a way that they'll understand it? What do they need to hear? What do they need to read in order to really understand what you've got? And you are so close to it. You know, if we're in it, if you're the computer guy or the engineer or the architect or the farmer or the scientist or the researcher, if you are whatever it is you're into, you're so close to it that you got to get out of it and say, okay, what do they need to hear? And one of the, I'll give you one last tip here, and that is talk to people the way you would talk to your grandmother. And the reason I say that is advice, right? <laughs> because because um, sometimes we're a little bit, disrespectful to parents or siblings or children but we tend to be very respectful to our grandmother and if you were to explain your business to your grandmother you would you would slow down a little bit you would use analogies examples you would do it very you would do it very respectfully you wouldn't talk down you you wouldn't be condescending but you would still share it in such a way that made sense to her fair 
Absolutely. And I think it applies also to every uh, online communication. We should have this patience uh, because we don't know the background actually on, uh, of the people who we talk to, right? In many yeah. cases, uh, they are the, the pseudonyms. We don't know uh, if this is a guy, a girl, uh, what age, uh, what uh, maybe educational background. So we sometimes have to be really patient in order to explain something. Right. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Because I think in many cases people assume when they are online that the person on the other side is the same as they are, and in oh, most yeah. cases uh, it's absolutely not the case, right? Well, and I think I think actually what they assume is that the other person is stupid, or sometimes, or, right. or, or or has poor poor ethics. You know, um, and, and, but what we do want, and I think this is true for most communication is I, I always think it's interesting that we want others to do what we don't want to do. And that is let go of our own personal value or system or knowledge base. And what I mean by that is that, you know, one person wants to write to the other person and say, you know, you're wrong, you don't know anything about it, you should let go of your value, left is right, and right is left, and you know, whatever, one, one way's right, my way's right, and your way's wrong, and we want that other person to say, you're right, you're right, when in fact, as soon as somebody asks us to change our ideas, or our minds, or our thoughts, or our ethics, or our values, or our principles, we go, no, 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 I don't want to change that, so we want others to change instead of changing us, and Probably not a good way to approach. Absolutely. Certainly not a great way to communicate. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's uh, end up this conversation with uh, just, you know, inviting people to be respectful for each other, yes. understanding, and uh, also kind in, uh, in, in the communications, right? Yeah. Let, and let's really try to communicate. Let's really make sure that when we're saying something, it's meant in, you know, assume positivity, assume positive intent, and let's make sure that when we communicate, we're really thinking about what does that person need to hear in order to understand me? Do they need to hear good job or do they need to hear a new idea? And what are they willing to read in order for them to understand what I'm trying to help them with? And a lot of that means putting it in the audience's perspective which is not necessarily my perspective, but treating it like a doctor, looking at it, diagnosing, and then saying, based on what you've told me, who you are, who you, what you've said, this is the one you'll want to take, as opposed to the one I want you to do. Absolutely. Lori, thank you for your great advice, for the insights you have shared with us. If people want to find out more, where can they find you? please come to my website at laurierichards.com and it's L-A-U-R-I-E Richards, that's Richards with an S, dot com. Or okay, I will put that in the, in, uh, in the comment, so you will have the link there. Okay? Thank you. And also they can email me, uh, feel free to email me, and I'm in, on Instagram at Lori R. Strategist. Lori, our strategist, and you'll see a lot of information there, but they can reach out, um, and uh, Raphael knows how to get a hold of me, too, so let him know. So Check out so our yeah. yeah, get some ideas from there as well, and if I can ever help you or any of your, um, your listeners, you know I'm here for you, and them. Thank you so much, Lori. So, guys, uh, I have promised you a contest. Uh, let's do the following. We will... Choose one of the comments, of your comments, and uh, give away this special edition of the book we have, we both of us have written with uh, Brian Tracy, and th this became a bestseller on Amazon. Right, and right out of the box, didn't it? It was really hot, right out of the box. That's exciting. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. So they are really great insights in the book. Uh, Shall we, uh, shall we take this um, contest we were talking about uh, earlier? Yeah. Uh, so let's just share your, if, you know, um, if you can uh, go through, the, through your email and count the words I, we, our, and so on. Uh, the first um, person perspective words and share in your comment how many of them you had in your last pitch, in your last email pitch, or maybe even better, the percentage. I mean, uh, take all the words and take days and the percentage. And the person who is this time really the, the worst communicator, uh, it's not the award, 
but uh, he will he will become a winner and it's kind of a you know prize for your truthfulness Let, let's consider this the person for the most <laughs> right so he will get or she will get uh, the copy of this special edition of this bestseller right perfect wonderful perfect. I so if thank you. Tips on how to do that? Reach out to me on my website, and and I'll help them make that happen. Absolutely. Thank you, Lori, and thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, uh, girls, for uh, watching that. Uh, I wish you a fantastic day today. Let's do something extraordinary today.